Yo, what is up guys, it's Pedro here, and in today's video, I will be giving you guys a major injury update for the Washington Commanders. The final injury report has been released for the week one ga game against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Also, they released a player, and I want to talk about an interesting strategy that the Washington Commanders will be using that I don't necessarily agree with, but we'll go over it. If you guys are new, make sure to subscribe, hit that like button, and that notification bell as well, so you guys never miss a video. And yeah, all those things help out a ton. It's week one. Let's start it off well and doing all those things help out a ton and make sure you guys check out BetUS first link in that description. So you look at, we'll go for the injury update first and then go over this kind of interesting rotation that the commanders are planning to try out that I don't necessarily agree with. Uh, but injury update wise, Mariota's out with a pec injury, uh, chest slash pec injury didn't or was limited on Wednesday, then didn't practice Thursday and Friday. So seems like something that could be a little bit long term. Uh, Johnny Newton or Dejon Newton, uh, foot injury, limited DMP, limited. He's doubtful for the game. Yeah, just not gonna play. More likely than not, Brandon Coleman doesn't even have an injury designation. That's good. Uh, full, 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 and full for the rest of the guys. So that's great. And then you look at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Yeah, Logan Hall, defensive lineman, he's out. You got Kalijah Kansi. Uh, he is questionable. Practice both days and then had, uh, or practice Wednesday and Thursday, and then was limited on Friday. I'm guessing he plays. Then you got Trey Palmer with a concussion. Was full all week. He'll play. And then you got Ernest Brown, a D lineman. He is out. He's getting. He's he just got put on IR, I guess. And everyone else is good. Mike Evans, uh, I was going to say maybe looks like he's a little banged up. Nope, just uh, rest. And a lot of receivers you're going to have to worry about. Mike Evans and Chris Godwin, the you know the main guys. We'll see if Mike Evans, Mike San or not Mike Evans, if Emmanuel Forbes, Benjamin St. Juice, and Mike Sanders still are able to keep up with them. I mean, they, that's the strength of their team is their receivers. They got some good old linemen too. I mean, Tristan Wirfs, one of the best in the game, and Rashad White isn't too bad either. Like, this team is not bad. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers are a solid, solid football team. They made the playoffs last year. They won a playoff game. It's no joke of a team. So uh, can't take them lightly at all. And that's really the main injury update for the Washington Commanders and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers game. So Brandon Coleman going to play. Dan Quinn confirmed that, and that is good. You know, it, it's good to hear for sure. And real quick, let's go over the captains for this game, and then we'll get into this uh, rotation. So they're doing weekly captains. I don't know if I love that. I'd rather do a season-long thing, but it's 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 not the end of the world. Terry, Clone Farrell, and Jeremy Reese. Very interesting combo here. I mean, Terry, not at all uh, surprising, you know. Uh, he's he's that guy. He's that leader. He's the you know heartbeat of this team. And yeah, Clone Farrell, new addition to the team. Very interesting that he's a team captain. Uh, but I'm not there. I don't really know what's going on. They got Jeremy Reeves, special teams team captain. Not surprising there. Would love for Tretzway to be captain at some point. But uh, Jeremy Reeves has been you know captain the last few years or at least last couple years, and has done a good job at it and is a good special teams player. So. Uh, I'm definitely fine with him as a captain. It really is not a big deal. Some teams do like eight, ten captains. Like I think the Bears had like eight, and then some teams do like three, like the Commanders. So it really isn't a big deal. But real quick, a word from today's sponsor, BetUS. And a huge shout out to BetUS for sponsoring today's video and the entire 2024 to 2025 NFL season. You guys, check them out. I'll have the link in the description. You get a 125% sign up bonus on your first three deposits up to $2,000. And they got some props for the games, a bunch of different props for the games. They got Jaden Daniels passing yards for the game, 217.5 over under. Uh, you can see the odds right here. And then you got Terry McLaurin over under 58.5. That's the line there. They have other lines as you know as well. There's one that I really like. Going to make a short about it, so make sure you guys check it out. But hint, it's about Zach Ertz. I think Zach Ertz is going to have a very solid game for the Washington Commanders. But you can check them out. They got lines on the you know actual game, the score over under, 
and then all you know and who's going to win but also on the players as well so check them out link in the description fastest payouts in the industry and as usual bet responsible okay and again a huge shout out to bet us make sure you guys check them out link in the description now let's get into this rotation we talked about the captains we talked about the injury updates we'll get into a second on you know someone that got uh released and this is just a quick injury update on uh marcus Mariota says i would say uh marcus strained a peck his chest and so i would say right now he's unlikely and yeah there there you go not looking good for marcus Mariota. jeff Driscoll will be qb2 uh let's go on to this was kind of what the topic of the video is quinn said they're planning on giving reps to both cornelius lucas and brandon coleman he's ready to rip quinn said of coleman i just don't love a tackle rotation week one and I get, I understand where they're coming from because they don't want, they don't want to overwhelm uh, Brandon Coleman, and maybe you know he's still dealing with that injury, and it's a pain tolerance thing, and they don't want to, uh, you know, maybe they think he can't handle the pain, or they don't want him to play the whole game, or it's a situation of okay, this guy, he's a rookie, third round pick. Obviously has never played in the NFL before, didn't even play in the preseason, missed a lot of camp. Maybe they don't want him to play every game. They maybe they or not, maybe they don't want him to play every snap against the Bucks. Maybe they want to ease him into it. So if it's a rotation in terms of let's have him, you know, go the first three possessions and then, you know, see how he goes. And if he's hurting a bit, then you can Put in Lucas, or if he's struggling, you can put in Lucas. You know what? That's fine. But if it's like, oh, on this play, hopefully that didn't shake it up too much. Accidentally bumped to the com- bumped into the computer. But if it's a situation where like, oh, Brandon Coleman's gonna play first down, and then Lucas is gonna play third down, like th- th- I don't think it's gonna be that situation. But if it is, I don't love that. I, I actually hate that. So hopefully that is not what is going to happen. And Kyle was kind of talking in the, in the comments saying maybe in situations where they have three tackles, that's when they're going to play uh, both of them together. So I don't know. I really don't know what's going to happen here. Um, we'll have to wait and see. But Brandon Coleman's going to play. The question is how much and how much is that injury still kind of bothering him? And then, yeah, so I, I'm really excited to see Brandon Coleman, though. Made a video about him yesterday. Please, please go check that out. Uh, I feel like Brandon Coleman has a chance to really change things for the Commanders and their their kind of rebuild and maybe make that a little bit quicker if he hits, if he's a hit. And uh, yeah, excited to see what he can do this week against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Not going to be an easy task going up against a solid Bucks pass rush. And, you know, Todd Bowles knows how to, you know, trick quarterbacks and even offensive linemen as well. So we'll see what... What happens on Sunday against the Bucks? And sorry if I repeated a couple of word, words there. Cut out disk storage, whatever. Uh, ran out of space, so I had to delete some stuff and then came back and recorded. So hopefully was able to leave off where I was. And then last thing, the Commanders released wide receiver Byron Pringle, guy that you know I was a little bit surprised made the roster. Not super surprised, but definitely didn't have him on the roster. So I guess they, they're getting them off. We'll see if they call any players up on game day. Maybe a Casimir Allen type. Maybe, you know, another guy. I don't know. But they brought in Noah Brown, so they just feel like they don't need uh, Byron Pringle. And uh, we'll see what the corresponding move is. You know, maybe, again, they promote someone from the practice squad to the active roster and they also can add two extra guys on game day from the practice squad. So they have a few different things that they can do. And we will see tomorrow. Not sure if I'm going to make a video. You know, Virginia Tech does have a home game. So might go to that or, you know, whatever. We'll be around, you know, tailgating. So uh, not sure if I'll make a video. And then obviously Sunday, all hands on deck for the Commanders game against the Bucks. The start of the Jaden Daniels, Dan Quinn, and Adam Peters era. If you guys did stick around till the end, go ahead and comment down below Donald Penn. Donald Penn, 
played here for a year it was you know was honestly not terrible but yeah thanks for watching hope you guys enjoyed and peace sorry but real quick make sure you guys check out bet us like usual link in the description huge shout out to them for sponsoring today's video